Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Uh, in this segment, we will discuss uh, two terminologies, vertical integration and horizontal integration. Uh, we have seen these two terms already, but I will further elaborate these two. So vertical integration is actually uh, if a firm with function that were previously performed by suppliers or distributors because it can be on both sides. So if the sum of the activities on the upstream or downstream are performed by other parties and but are not done internally. So that organization is now vertically integrated. So a vertically integrated firm grows in terms of what it makes or what activities it performs. So there were lesser activities performed by the organization in the supply chain, now there are more activities performed. So the, the more steps in the sequence, the greater is the vertical integration. So this is a relative term. Ideally, there is 100% integration, but it could be less than that as well. So the more a company owns the activities in the supply chain, the more vertically integrated it is. As we saw previously, a manufacturer that decided to begin producing products, components and material that it normally purchased, it, it is integrating in the backward direction on the upstream and if a manufacturer that decides to make, uh, decides to take over distribution and perhaps sale to the ultimate consumer is integrating in the forward direction. So backward integration and forward integration. Classical example of vertical integration is the Ford Motor Company in the times of Henry Ford. So Ford Motor Company had its own uh, Iron ores from where iron was extracted and then steel was made. So it had steel making plants. Then of course it has component production plants, car manufacturing plants, distribution centers and showrooms. So right from the raw material, in fact extraction of the raw material, making of the alloys, component production and then the car production, distribution, showroom, everything was owned by the Ford Motor Company. Everything before the product reached in the hands of customer, everything was owned by the Ford Motor Company. So that is the classical example of a vertical integration. Another example is, for example, if we have a textile unit, and for example, if it has its own cotton fields, then it's on, for example, spinning, and then, for example, weaving, and then, for example, stitching, and all activities like finishing and packaging. And finally, for example, it's, it has its own outlets or stores as well from where the product is sold. So this is also a vertically integrated unit. And I repeat that this is a relative term. So the company may not have the cotton field itself, but the rest of the activities are performed by uh, this organization. So this is also vertically integrated, but less integrated as uh, it would be if it had its own cotton fields as well. So that is vertical integration. I heard, but I'm not sure what is the situation nowadays that Mitchell's also had its own forms and its own processing units to make the products like jams, jellies, and um, other products. It, it used to be vertically integrated. Now, horizontal integration is slightly, slightly tricky. If an organization produces or sells similar products in a various geographic locations, that is horizontally integrated. So it makes and sells the same kinds of things, but in different geographic area. This uh, uh, definition is slightly 
unclear. So in simple words, if the organization makes similar products that it was not making before, so it, it expands its, its market share, that is moving in the, in the horizontal integration direction. So this is a simple example that illustrates this concept. So there was a company A that was making luxury cars. But the brakes of, for this car were made by company one. So after some time, this company A acquired company one that was making one of the components for its final product. So that is an example of vertical integration. So company A acquired company one that was making a component for, for, for its cars. Now there is a company B that is making electrical cars. So if company A acquires company B or starts to make the product that company B makes, that is the electrical cars, so both possibilities are there, then this is horizontal integration. So company is expanding in the horizontal direction. Horizontal again means in the similar markets, it was making cars. Now again, it is making cars of a different type. So that is horizontal integration. So company A makes uh, luxury cars, but wants to expand its product. It does that by acquiring company B, which makes electrical cars. Company A is now in position to own a larger share of the entire automotive market. So that is the effect of horizontal integration. So in the case of vertical integration, company is having more functions in the same supply chain. That is vertical integration. In horizontal integration, more actually market share. So by, for example, by expanding uh, product variety as we saw in this case, or there are a couple of other ways, but that is more common. But result here is it, it has more market share by expanding its product, product variety. So company in this case, company could decide to grow vertically within its industry's value chain. So vertical integration is in the same supply chain. So in this case, it could acquire company one, which makes brake system used in the cars that this company is making. But if it acquires or constructs a new organization, company B, that makes different types of car. So that would be horizontal integration. So horizontal integration is the expansion of the firm at the same level. Same level. Again, what is meant by same level? The company was manufacturing cars. It was a manufacturer, it still is the manufacturer, but it is the manufacturer, it is still the manufacturer of cars, but different types of cars. If it acquired company one, it would be the manufacturer of something that it was not making, but within the same supply chain of uh, luxury cars. So the company expands at the same level of the value chain in the same or similar industries. If industry is different, if the company is making a different product, it is called diversification. So there are three ways the organization may accomplish horizontal integration. First way is by developing its new capabilities entirely in-house. So company was not making the product, now it has purchased the equipment and developed the processes and installed the plant in-house. So it is dependent on itself to, uh, to make new product, for example. In this case, for example, the manufacturers of polythene bags starts to make polypropylene sacks. Company was making polythene bags, shoppers. Now it starts to make polypropylene sacks. So it was a plastic product made, making company product was slightly different. It was a packaging product, but common uh, consumer uh, polythene bags, now it is making polypropylene sacks for industrial usage. For example, it was making polythene bags like these, 
no it is also making a sex the difference is that it was a consumer product this is an industrial product processes are slightly different both involve extrusion process but extrusion is slightly different here than here it involves blow molding it also involves for example a, a special process to make the sex but company is moving to a new product and it has installed new machinery new equipment so it is integrating horizontally so market share of course will increase because it's a new product and it is uh, diversification as well another example is the manufacture of plastic automotive parts and that develops expertise to make plastic bottles and cups so this organization made for example automotive parts steerings and bumpers uh, and other plastic parts for the automotive industry and it decided to diversify to make other plastic parts parts for food and beverage companies like water bottles and uh, plastic cups etc so of course it is integrating horizontally making the plastic products it is still a manufacturer but making a different product so it is diversifying as well so this is one way that the company makes uh, new products at the same level and by developing the properties uh, by by developing the capabilities in house the second way is by acquisition or merger the company acquires or merges the company at the same level one example is facebook's acquisition of instagram so both are social media companies so the level is the same but now the instagram is a part of facebook now facebook has more share in that market more 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 existence in that market so facebook and instagram the merger of exxon mobil to major oil companies is an example of horizontal integration by acquisition or merger and merger of mobile link and warren so again same level both are telecom companies but now of course they are one company so more market share more appearance in the telecom sector so that is also horizontal integration uh, there could be there is a third way as well like i told you there are three ways but third is not mentioned here so you could think for yourself what is the third way to achieve horizontal integration so this is something we have already discussed here everything is every party is independent supplier processors uh, the shipping organization distributor and retailer so there is no integration here for example this organization acquires supplier so that is backward integration this is forward integration and this is integration in both direction so backward integration focuses on the activities located closer to the origin of the value chain that is the supply side or upstream upstream is also sometimes called supply side and downstream of the supply chain is also called demand side so in backward integration focuses on activities located closer to region of the value chain that is the supply side or upstream and forward integration focuses on activities closer to the end customer or consumer that is the demand side or rather downstream so i hope these two terms are clear to you and in the next segment we will uh, have an overview of this lecture 1-1 with the help of some progress check questions thank you very much